Yeah, you, you should be able to hear me. Good evening, Clark Howard listeners. So don't, yeah, Mike, just do your thing and then... Yeah, don't buy luggage. Just wait at the airport for something that you like and then grab it. <laughs> Use it, and then when you come back home, put it back where you found it. Mm. Everyone has a black bag. You mean African-American bag. I'm almost done podcasting here. Okay. Oh, so I don't have glaucoma. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah, I was a little scared. It was just caffeine that's so weird. Yeah. I know. In two weeks, it went down like 25%. And he says, that must be it. The whatever is in your eye? Yeah, the the pressure in your eye was like the caffeine. I must have a reaction to it. But you know what I noticed when I used to do, when I first time I directed a movie, I used to wear contact lenses all the time. Yeah. And like the first day on the set, I couldn't my contact lenses. I had to take them out because my eyes were bulging, and I had to wear glasses. And I realized that all the pressure from directing your first movie, you're so scared and everything, yeah. it all went in my eyes. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Horrible. My dad was there. So it's one of the, you know, not my father's dad. I'm so happy that I shared with him like two times he came. One time when I directed and one time at my first movie I was in as an actor. He came down to the set. We were shooting on a on a yacht and the lady was named Sybil Danning. She had this bo- these big old. Mammaries. Yeah, Teet. tits, tits. He's big old, yeah. And my father, I love my father because I was scuba diving in the scene. And I said, Dad, watch me. If I start to drown, I'm going to wave because I don't know if the crew's going to save me. He goes, don't worry, Dominic. I'm there. And I'm all the way out. I'm in the middle of, <laughs> of Marina Del Rey in a scuba suit. And I look over to him, and he's looking at this girl. He's on the yacht looking at the girl's tits. How much was the budget of your movie that you directed? Oh, a few hundred thousand. And it was just so much pressure of... Yeah, because we shot the whole movie in like seven days. Well, <laughs> But see, we didn't shoot like guerrilla f- filmmakers, like guerrilla filmmakers just run quick, get the shirt. We had permits, we had catering, we had... So we had a full crew, but only for seven days. Was this busted? No, this uh, was uh, Evil Laugh. Is it a... Yeah, cult? I've seen busted and... <laughs> Holy cow. You saw Dominic naked, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, but you know what? The woman that he was with in the shower, you had been, yeah, you'd been impressed since. She was pretty. Every time I touched one of her breasts, they put in the sound effect. <laughs> it's not a serious movie. That's not serious filmmaking. No. Scorsese would be angry. Yeah, just like Hugo was a serious piece of crap. <laughs> that movie did suck. Oh, God. I think he just got all 3D. I don't know. You know, when they do 3D, it's not on film. It's on video. This is what, what do you I mean? heard. The, all the 3D movies that you're seeing, it's not film anymore. It's digital. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the Well, duh. Fly. So, so you texted me. You texted me and Jack and Joe at the same time on Sunday. And you were like, Petri is banned from the show. Yeah. Well, first of all, didn't they ban Petri like a couple weeks ago? And second of all, did something trigger this? What is so weird about that whole thing is I send it and Jack sends me a I text back, great, okay, good. You know what Joe sends me back? What? We'll talk about it. No, 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 no. Joe says, great, great, great. And Jack sends me a text, we'll talk about it on Tuesday. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't I know. But, but, but I what? felt stabbed in the back by that. But so, so what precipitated? Precipi- I got another uh, email from him. Okay. And the email was this big, long email about blah, blah, blah. And On then, a Sunday or a Saturday. Uh, yeah. Okay. And the email, in the email, he even attacked me. Usually he always says nice things about me. Like he always talks bad about Vince saying, Vince is such a dick and Vince is a dick. And <laughs> yeah. you're listening to Vince. I said, I'm not listening to Vince. No, Vince hates me. Blah, 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 blah. Vince pretended <laughs> he was my friend and then he stabbed me in the back. Oh, God. So he sent me all this stuff about Vince. So I'm, you know, and then even Mike, he says, Mike's going against me. So like... Ugh. And the, the, he hates Armstrong and Getty, and they all suck. But he always says nice things about me. And I thought that was because every time he calls, I listen to him. Yeah. I let him talk. And at, once I go, listen, I got to bring on a call from Egypt. So I got to go, oh, really? Uh, so, But this time he said, and Dominic's a liar. Oh. 
So then I said, okay, F you. <laughs> I'm the only one who puts up with your bullshit. Right. And you, you attack me too? I mean, if, please, don't pee on my leg and tell me it's raining. You burn that bridge. Forget that. Now it's so much easier. I'm just going to say, you banned, goodbye, boom, you yeah. banned, goodbye, boom. Or just put him on hold because they'll call right back. <sighs> He's completely delusional, am no, I right? No, I sent him I sent him an email saying you are officially banned forever. <laughs> Even though Jack and Joe banned you a month ago. Yeah. No. But he's completely del- delusional, am I right? He's just, he's, he's, his head is... He like, thinks that other callers are talking about him. Yeah. Like, he'll call me and go, well, see, that caller just said that because I said three shows ago that... Da, 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 da. So that caller's <laughs> just copying me. And I'm like, okay. No one cares, dude. Then he ca- Didn't you like that picture I sent you of me? He sent a picture of a kid taking a, a dump on a little bowl or something. What? Little three-year-old what? kid potty being potty trained yeah. and he said this is what i look like and i said you know he goes don't you think i was hilarious i said no i don't it's hilarious like why don't you send us a regular picture of yourself why because i want to see what you look like why because i'm afraid i'm gonna be walking somewhere and you're gonna come up behind me do you know how popular michael this show is i got a knock on the door jehovah's witnesses i said oh hello how are you and the lady's like, oh, how are you? Blah, 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 blah. What's your name, Dominic? Blah, 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 blah. She says, you know, in our religion, we like the men to talk to the men, so we'll send over a man. I said, great. So what? five minutes later, I get a knock on the door, Jehovah's Witnesses. I would have been like, no, thank you, lady. Well, no, Leave I, me alone. You know, you know how I handled a Jehovah's Witness one time that came up to my door? I ended up counting them down like I do, you know, with Joe and Jack with the 30 and the 20 <laughs> before they could get off the porch. But wait, I was fascinated by what they had to say. Did you invite them into your house? No, I almost did, though, because I was uh, very, I missed a movie. Weirdo. A movie was playing on TV and it ended well. well the, we talked for about 15, 20 minutes. It's people like you, see, they knock on thousands of doors and get <laughs> rejected, but every once in a while someone will listen to them. It's people like you that ruin it for the rest of us. Well, the- I was fascinated, all the stuff Whatever. about God, and, you know, it was very cool. Cool. So she leaves. There's two old people leave. And um, <laughs> all of a sudden, about 20 minutes later, another knock on the door. this guy, and he says to me, uh, he says, oh, yeah, uh, we're from our... I said, you know, my time is... Uh, he goes, uh, they asked me about my name. I said, Dominic Brasher. He says, uh, oh, I see. That's the TV. I said, what? He says, that's the TV I heard you talking about on, on Armstrong and Getty. Oh, God. I said, oh, you listen to the show? He goes, yes, I do. So, I mean... I don't know. People know about my TV. So we gotta be, I got to be careful of stuff I say on the air. Somebody called me up and said, exactly what school does Joe send his children to? Yeah, <laughs> see, that's just crazy. <laughs> like, I'm not telling you. Leave oh, me alone. <laughs> it's blah, 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 blah. <laughs> what? Which dorm does Joe's daughter live in? <laughs> what stairway does Vince leave from at night? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we should probably get going on the real thing here. Mm. Oh. I got the music ready to go any time here. Okay, oh. I just got to say the secret word. Well, Dominic, you fell asleep in the movie theater, right? Yeah. During Resident Evil 5. Oh, God, it was so bad. See? You would have ruined our date. Uh, don't say date, because people are thinking you're a homo now. Our mandate. Yeah. As soon as I run in, I got run in, I get met by... Um, I get met by Marshall. First thing in the morning, like at 2.30 a.m. Ooh, how was your bro date? How was your bro date? Marshall, get the hell out of my face. It's too early for you. <laughs> <laughs> Marshall on Friday. I don't want to turn this five after into Marshall complains about what yeah. Marshall is mad about. You know, like he was like, "Oh, Vince, you did this on Friday," and I was like, uh, "No, I didn't, dude." Was he complaining? Yeah, he complained about the monkey thing. He complained about you doing the picture and Mike hitting the. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> you what did you do? Why did you do that, Michael? Dominic, were you here Friday? Jesus Christ! Oh yeah, I forgot. I forgot. Okay, ready. <laughs> Michael, I guess he doesn't like that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, it, it was the, it wasn't the first time he heard it. It was in the mon- context of the monkey. I don't know. I was just like, whatever, dude. See, but but well, I can't come. I can't criticize Marshall anymore because he'll get see. Mad. But people miss what we're trying to get with this. With the whole thing we're trying to get is to get as almost as real as we can on the radio. Now, whenever you're on the radio. There's a, you, you know, there's that, you can't be 100% real, but we're trying to get there like 80, 90%. Yeah. <laughs> Except for friggin' Michael, who won't talk about anything personal about himself. He actually no, had I the nerve to, no, to say I on have, Friday, I have a personal life, no, and I don't discuss my personal life. Whatever. Only people who tell me that are guys in the closet. 
That's all I got to tell you, no. Michael. See, everybody is gay to you. I know. You think everybody is gay. You I think lived everyone in has Hollywood. been molested. I know. Everyone, everyone, is gay. everyone is gay. I lived in Hollywood. And show me somebody who's not. The Super Bowl is gay. Yeah. You okay. know what's gay is... Uh, car- uh, Michael, I want to know about your personal life. I don't, I don't know why you want to tell me. She tell you, dude. Oh, God. She, just because you're an open book doesn't mean... Well, you and I, Vince, are opening our books here. Michael oh. just sits Vince in the back. Vince is hiding a lot from you. Oh, I know that. Your mom opens, I know her, that. opens her book. Yeah. All right. Okay. And hit it! It's five after. The Armstrong and Getty After Show five-minute podcast. Without Armstrong or Getty. But with Vince, Michael, and Dominic. This is a part of the show... <laughs> Well, we talk about Armstrong and Getty show. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have something? <laughs> Today I have something. Good Why, you, 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 you hit our, our engineering sent out an email about something about the phones. You hit reply to all and criticize them. You blew up their spot, as the kids say. You I put did them it. on blast. Yeah, good, yeah, good, great. Good. Next time we go off the air, you know how long it's going to take to come back? Bull crap! You know what? You guys, I know offense because you've been in California too long, but you're all sissified. You are sissified. You got to stand up to these people. I'm sick and tired. Our coworkers. I know, but I'm sick and tired of them treating us like we're pieces of dirt. When we have a problem, <laughs> come friggin' fix the problem. It's ridiculous. You got to admit, it's a little touchy, though. I mean, yeah, you it's don't touchy make... with them because they don't want to come and fix the damn problem. But then the other thing is you don't want to make them too mad to where they don't even care. And they, dude, they have other dude, stuff to I, do. I know what to do now. They don't want publicity. <laughs> they don't want publicity. You know what one of the engineers told me? He goes, oh, I don't want I don't want Armstrong and Getty talking about us on the air. I need to run some sort of disclaimer on this podcast. <laughs> Dude, why are you so the, afraid? The following opinions are not. <laughs> They're my opinions. I just see, you know, like, I, I, I send these help memos, which I think I go right to the, the garbage. Right. And, just send them. I, and so nothing gets done. But I notice when I send something, I, I, I click the thing on. First time I did it was on accident. The second time I thought, well, this is great. I got a big response. So, um, well, you you put you you hung out the dirt their dirty laundry. So good, to speak. good. Well, let them fix it. Why don't they fix the? If, answer me, Mike. Vince. I mean, why don't they fix the stuff? I, I assume they have a lot of stuff to do. We are the most important radio show that they have to deal with, and to get them to just even to respond. They fixed the hot, all the phone numbers, but you think anybody was bright enough to send me an email saying the numbers are fixed here, are the new numbers? So essentially, for the first part of Armstrong and Getty Show today, I couldn't use the hotlines or the warm lines or whatever they're called because they never told me what the new numbers were. I mean, after me getting into a, like a screaming match with someone, I won't say Darren's name, but after I got in a screaming match, then all of a sudden, you know, he, he was like, okay, these are the numbers. Well, we didn't know. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. And then I get the IT guy saying, why did you send it to everybody? And I said, oh, I made a mistake. Yeah, but whatever. He actually wrote to me, whatever. So I wrote back to him, whatever. <laughs> You're like Mitt Romney with whatever. a gaff. I don't, these are not gaffs. Well, Gaff is when you do something by accident. This is real. I'm sick of people treating the Armstrong and Getty show like the like the like the stepchild, like the illegitimate stepchild. We deserve respect. We got you know you don't know how t- you worked with these guys too long. You don't know how talented Armstrong and Getty are. And and, and let me tell you, Mike's really really talented with his playing his little spots. It's a little odd, but he's talented. You think and Scott Vince, Bale is talented? You are, <laughs> Vince, you are very talented too because you haven't seen the dramatic work he's done. I have. Have you ever seen the movie A Little uh, uh, A Little Mean Men? No, no. Very Mean Men? Very no. Mean Men? I did. Well, if it was any Scott good, was it would have gone somewhere. No, it's, it, it never, no, that's not the truth. Sometimes great work doesn't get distributed. Well, that's true. Yeah. But I'm sure it was crappy. What's up with your teeth, dude? No, please. I yeah. broke my front tooth. Yeah, you hit the coffee table, right? Yeah. But how? Did, how? You said, you, you, you were like, I, I fell. Well, I tripped over you my even... own feet. I was running to go to the big screen TV. Why? The why were you running? In, I don't know why I run around my house. I run around my house. Mike, do you believe this story? You know, I actually do. Yeah. I can picture him <laughs> running around. That's why. Yeah. You definitely shuffle sometimes, but I don't know about running. So, no, you were mentioning the cat got in the way or something? No, well, I'm always frightened to death I'm going to step on the cat. <laughs> 
You know, that's why I don't have I, I don't have anything under my bed because I used the cat used to go under the bed and I used to dream of the bed just falling down and crushing the cat. So I, I put the box springs right on the floor so the cat oh, can't get under that's, there. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. And when I lived in New York, what I did is I took cinder blocks and I put them underneath the bed so that if the if the thing fell, it would hit the cinder blocks and the cat would still be okay. Your ghetto, dude. <laughs> you, got, you got your bed up on cement blocks <laughs> yeah. like in the yeah. front yard. Yeah. So, okay, let's talk about the show. Okay. Okay. We got one minute. Okay. No, we don't got even that, guys. Mm. All right, whatever. Well, yeah, what's you'll, up? You'll what you Tim the Lawyer was really good. Love TTL. Tim the Lawyer was very, very good. Matter of fact, we're going to make some calls. Maybe we can get him his own show. I'm mixed. Brosh is going to get on it. Brosh is going to make some phone calls. Going to make some calls. He watches the Cafe Nation thing, too. See you tomorrow. Why would anyone watch that? Oh, he likes it. Oh. <laughs> See?